Um, so now I just need to figure out how to do um, the uh, demand node for the uh, at the manifold so I can balance this guy. Gotcha. And uh, you know, okay. get some uh, earnest calculations going. All right. So, uh, all right. I've got your screen back up here. All right. So let's um, let's go into a 3D view. Perfect. So the far left system, that's your rack system. Correct. This is my overhead system that is directly above it, right here. Gotcha. So what we want to do is simulate that system demand. Now, just out of curiosity, is that an existing overhead system or is that a new system? It's an existing overhead system. Gotcha. So you have existing um, hydraulic demand info? Yes. Yeah. Yes, I do. Okay. So, the the quickest easiest way to do this is to is to drop a hose valve at the top of that vertical riser pipe segment. Okay. And within the properties of that hose valve, we're going to adjust the flow state to we'll start out by by setting it to a fixed flow state. Um, but we might need to change it to a pressure dependent flow state depending on how the program balances that demand with this in rack system. Okay, let's see, let me get zoomed in here on the hydraulic demand thing. Okay, oh. all right, I've got my information here. Uh, 1711 at 124 PSI for the overhead operate that. So, um, let's see, let's go to tools and then flow devices maybe? Uh, no, select hose. Hose, okay. And then snap that hose right there, perfect. Okay. All right. Now, let's open the properties of that hose valve. Okay. And um, under flow state, select fixed flow, and then type in the um, required pressure and flow from the existing uh, placard or calc that you've got for that system. I'll have to budget a little bit because that's back at the fire pump, but it'll be okay. All right. Good deal. All right, that's in there. Okay, so let's hit OK now. Right on. So now that we've got that hose valve connected to piping, that is connected to supply piping, valve is open, looks good. So just a, just a heads up, that when, when the program calculates this, it's going to include that flow, and it's going to it's going to um, discharge that hose at that exact flow rate. That flow rate will not change or, or adjust. So that's okay. that's how the program treats uh, a hose valve when we set the flow state to fixed flow. The program will maintain that flow rate and it will adjust the K factor of that discharge device based on the pressure at that point. So the flow okay. will never change, but the K factor and pressure could potentially change. Yeah, when I can we see that. when okay. we switch that to pressure dependent flow, what will happen is the the program will maintain the the K factor that we establish based on the minimum pressure and flow, and then it will adjust the flow rate based on the pressure that's required at that point in the system. Um, can I name that? Or well, uh, unfortunately, no. Name. So okay. what happens here is that. We're, we're mimicking an existing system demand to balance with this new rack system. Sure. And the only way to really f effectively mimic that system without designing it and, mm -hmm. and you know, placing a remote area and actually, you know, uh, calculating two remote areas on two systems simultaneously is to utilize yep. a hose valve. Now, what that's going to do is it's going to populate in all of your hydraulic reports as, as hose flow. So okay. you might need to be prepared to have a conversation with, you know, your fire authority or plan reviewer if they ask the question, well, why is your hose, you know, demand, you know, 1,500 GPM or whatever? Well, okay, I'm, you know, 1,100 of it is, is simulating this existing system balance, and then my other sure. is, you know, my outside hose or whatever. So <clears throat> with that, all that said, is there, do I need to map this valve or tell it, hey, this is to be associated with another calculation or... As long as it's on the drawing, it's always going to flow if I find it to flow. Yes, as long as that is connected to piping, that is connected to a supply, and the flow state is set to fixed or pressure dependent, 
the program will always discharge flow out of that hose valve device. Oh, that's, that's uh, okay. Well, that's not that's not good. Now, okay, so so let's take a look at the node analysis tab, because sure. again, I don't know what's driving the demand of the system. So it's saying that that sprinkler seventeen fifty four is mm -hmm. is the most demanding sprinkler, but that doesn't necessarily mean that that's what's driving the system. Sure. The sure, hose valve that. might actually be driving the system. So. If I'm we close sure, out of this, because, and yeah, the, the demands are so skewed, I'm sure the hose valve is driving. So if we close out of this and we right-click on that remote area and select hydraulic reports, and then preview the the selected hydraulic analysis, the program, it's it will always populate the most demanding path. So if this starts at the hose valve, which it is, that tells us that the hose valve is driving the demand of this calculation. Sure. Okay. Now, if we change, uh, and this is where it, hydraulic calculations get a little bit tricky, if we change the flow state of that hose valve to pressure-dependent flow, the program is going to is going to um, it's going to lock that k factor that we've established based on a minimum pressure and minimum flow and it's going to adjust that flow rate based on the k factor and and the required pressure at that point based upon the demand of your in rack system so that flow rate is probably going to drop significantly which m may not be appropriate for this scenario because if you if that's a minimum required for that existing system yeah. you certainly don't want to yeah. calculate less than that value right no no we won't we want to make sure we're accounting for the an accurate overhead, right? The yes, sir. So, yeah, yeah, we want to keep understand. it at the seven or seventeen eleven. Um, I think I just need to, and honestly, I just don't know. I need to discern if, if two hundred and fifty gpm of that is outside hose that they've accounted for as well. I may be double dipping on hose. Oh, for so that seventeen hundred flow rate? Yeah, yeah, gotcha. because well, it's so odd. This overhead, it's an ESFR system, right? So they've got 1,700, uh, or excuse me, it's uh, 17K ESFRs, and of course they've got 250 GPM hose, but they want me to include 500 GPM in the rack demand. Which so you're being, so the requirement here is to balance an existing ESFR overhead with an in rack system? Yeah, that's correct. I've only yeah. ever seen that requirement for paper storage. I, I, I've, I've well, had to do that once. Let me show you. It's it's an interesting um, assembly that they've got, but this is for BMW, and they're using. It's called a parts picker mez, and essentially what it is. Let me zoom in here, but um, so it's got these aisleways, right? Mm -hmm. um, here and here, and then um, so that's really what's driving it because these are solid sheeted. Now these in rack levels, it only gets sprinkled here and here. Um, but you know they require 30 GPM uh, demand at each head. But um, the reason that they didn't just grate this as well and this is because they have this machine that essentially runs back and forth down those and aisles and parts. pulls. Yeah. Yeah. This, and this box you see over here is uh, well, you can't see my cursor on that end, but that little X out box you see. Yeah. Um, that's the machine that like it'll pick it, pull it back, and then that thing flips. It looks like it looks like some alien stuff, <laughs> but uh, anyway, it's it's pretty neat. It's just kind of a booger to sprinkle because the tolerances are so so close. Yeah, so. it just it just seems weird. I mean, generally speaking, if you got ESFR, you can either eliminate interacts altogether or, you know, calculate them separately. I've only ever seen the need for, uh, but again, man, that was back in like 2010 or something. So it was right. a long time ago. Standards have changed since then, so. Um, uh, I, I, I'm with you, so I, I'm with you, man.